Hey everybody, Pay Marine here with another In The Crosshairs. It's been a little while since I've gotten a video. Just been super busy with everything, but this is a very important time um, and an event going on right now that I felt like I gotta get a video out. I know you've probably already seen a lot of videos of the coverage going on. Of course, what I'm talking about is the Warhammer World Vigilist event going on right now over in the UK, over there at the Warhammer World headquarters. Um, Lots of stuff to go over, a bunch of big news. Just to hit the wave top before I switch over and we kind of scroll through the community article here and, and go through it together. Um, <laughs> something I've been saying, something that I got a lot of crap for, is um, I had made a backstory for a lot of my Primaris Death Watch characters, and one of them, I can't remember which chapter it was now. Anyway, I think it was uh, my Minotaur Watchmaster. I had said that he was a regular Marine, then served a lot, then was upgraded to a Primaris. And people were like, that's not a thing, that can't happen. I was like, I could have swore it was a thing, I read it somewhere. I don't know, but it is a thing. Marius Calgar is a Primaris now, as well as his Honor Guard. There's a picture of one of his Honor Guard with it's, it's awesome, like all of them are awesome sculpts in general. Um, <clears throat> but I love one of his, he's got this awesome. Um, Honor Guard that I, I, I feel like I'm going to get that mod. If he comes with Honor Guard or whatever, I'm probably just going to get it. I don't really much care for Cal Guard. Just, I mean, it's a cool model, don't get me wrong, but like, I'm, I mean, I don't play Ultramarines. But I just see so much potential in just converting some of the Honor Guard for use with my uh, Star Commanders. Um, but the way the guy has his cloak around him and he's kind of like pulling around, he's got his shield up, it just looks so awesome. Um, so yeah, so definitely going to probably uh, look into that. But yeah, so there's that, which is huge, which then also spells a lot of things out there for the future of Primaris Marines and such like that. So um, we'll jump into that, and I'll give more of my um, my thoughts on what the future going forward is. You know, I had said from the beginning, and I actually had said a lot of people um, had a similar idea that this is the end of regular Marines, that Primaris are the way to go. I figured because... Um, there was such a, a huge uproar between the end of fantasy and the beginning of Age of Sigmar, and with 40k being the bigger, um, more iconic, I guess, IP for uh, Games Workshop, that this was going to be like a long, drawn-out, like 10-year transition process. So we're going to start start things, stop getting made and phased out and such. Um, but now, with this timeline, we're only about a year and a half since 8th edition has launched. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe those people that were saying there's a five-year plan might be more right. I thought that was going to be too quick of a turnaround, but, you know, that actually might be a thing now. Um, so far, there's they've announced there will be more stuff being announced later on in the day. So this is at least a part one video. I may do a part. Well, I will do a part two. I don't know if there will be more than that, but at least a part one and a part two to kind of go over the things that they're going to go over later this afternoon. So far, real quick, though, still not announced. Uh, no Tech Marines, no Primaris Tech Marines, so uh, he's still just a Primaris looking regular Tech Marine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm waiting for that, I'm waiting for a Primaris Tech Marine to pop up. But something else that is pretty sweet, as many have maybe seen this model, um, and definitely check out the Facebook page, I've got a whole album with this guy, but and I don't know how in depth it's going to go, but um, chapter approved, they've announced customized characters. To where you can you know, obviously customize your character. So um, I don't know if you can customize it quite to this extent that that um, Lone Survivor event at my Games Workshop lets you customize to an extreme extent where you can put any kind of weapon on there. Now with at least him, <clears throat> I kept it pretty modest as far as gave him only Primaris available options. Um, so nothing too crazy and everything is still aesthetically pleasing. So I mean, yes, he has a jump pack, but the grenade launcher fits perfectly. You know, one arm is the, fight, the Flamestorm Gauntlet, the other is that Plasma Executor, Executioner, whatever like that, the kind of heavy plasma pistol, basically. Um, so, and then he has an Iron Halo. So still, like, you know, aesthetically looks good and all that, Not nothing too crazy. Not He's not, like, carrying with a, I don't know, a Vindicator, or a Vindicator, Vindicator Cannon or something crazy. Anyway, so... That's kind of just a real quick wave tops of some things, and let's go into the article now, and we'll go kind of step by step what uh, what we see. All right. 
All right, hey everyone, back again. So since I made the video, they actually updated a little bit here with this blast from the past. So uh, we have the Noise Marines come in. Uh, it's been an incredible year, and for a long time, for Warhammer fans who'd been who thought we'd uh, we'd ever see another squat or plastic road traders, and it's about to get even better. Here's the news, courtesy of Warhammer 40,000 40, themed band Deep Strike. Um, so. And quick, it's a, it's a pretty funny little video here um, with Duncan and Peachy and all them uh, as part of a rock band. <laughs> So, yeah, there you have that. Um, pretty funny. Pretty good. They're getting pretty good with their videos. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> and then here's a better look. So your eyes ears have not been deceived. That was indeed a noise marine on a bright green flock base reborn for new generations. Seriously, get a good look. So there it is. Uh, definitely a different aesthetic um, than what we've gotten used to. This is definitely something that was more seen uh, back in the day, like, here he's got like a bunch of earrings like on his helmet, like definitely, you know, got a slanish symbol here. Um, yeah, definitely some interesting attire for sure and paint scheme. Um, can't wait to see the amazing paint work that people are going to do with this for sure. I imagine seeing some crazy awesome stuff. Um, but it sounds like it's only going to be like a limited thing. It just says this special celebratory miniature is based on Jess Goodwin's original sketches and classic noise marine models. It'll be on shelves in time for Christmas. So I'm not sure what the exact um, <clears throat> length of time this model will be available, but it's definitely an interesting one. Um, I won't probably won't pick one up just because, uh, yeah, I'm. Although like now that I'm looking at it again, this actually looks kind of like a cool helmet to to potentially use in some sort of conversions, like try to take the the earrings off somewhat. But like I like this right here. This actually could make for a pretty cool conversion actually. I do. I'm, I am liking this helmet quite a bit. It's interesting. You stand on the head of a primary space marine. So um, then we have, of course, you know, the, the vigilous opening open day. Warhammer is about to kick into high gear. Over the past few months, the board has been set and with comprehensively updated set of codexes. Not to mention some incredible new models. Now the next phase can begin and begins with vigilous. So basically, what this means that the codexes are just about done. There's a, like what Gene Steeler Colts I think are the last. To really get updated um, <clears throat> but the next thing is campaign books so Vigilist being the first of these campaign books um, at the Vigilist weekender fans are getting their first glimpse at what the future holds if you're not with us at Warhammer World today don't worry we're rounding up all the major events right here from the rebirth of 40k's most iconic space marine to a new full-size battle titan it's a big one so let's jump in so um, first we have the Imperial Vigilist Defiant over the past year, one planet has taken center stage in the Warhammer 40,000 narrative, Vigilus. Everything this year, Kill Team, Speed Freaks, Tooth and Claw, has been setting the stage for a climactic conflict upon this beluger uh, world, and now the War of Beasts has begun. With Imperium on the brink of breaking, one man has been, set, has been sent to hold the tide. So, we'll take a quick look at this. This is kind of an little video teaser a lot of people probably saw the beginning of this um, when they I first announced it coming up and laid low ancient gods i alone held the gates against the norkish horde for a night and a day i slew the avatar of an ancient god at the shrine of my ancestors by my hand was the blood first angrath defeated and driven howling into the warp 
I stood with ancient Galatin, and he cast down Scargor, the despoiler. I defended the 500 worlds throughout the darkest years of the Imperium. <laughs> Willingly, I stepped across the threshold of death and into the Rubicon Primaris. I am Marnius Kalgar. 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 And by the will of my father, I am reborn. And this one time when I was fighting Necrons and I charged the Immortals and they didn't get me with Overwatch and I killed, I killed a load and then they failed their morale check and then I, I charged the Overlord and I smashed him too. And then I got shot by a Monolith but it was alright because I've got a really good armor save and an invulnerable save and I just rolled the dice and I passed that and then I rolled a six and it was alright. And then I charged Of course, so there you have a pretty funny, pretty funny video. Of course, we have uh, <clears throat> Duncan at the end there for comic relief, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Uh, Marnie's Calgar's original, perhaps, remote, perhaps most iconic Space Marine character, having been with us in one form or another since the very first edition. So it's been only fitting that the venerable hero is first to be reborn as a primary Space Marine. This incredible new model combines the modern aesthetic of the primary Marines with the classic elements of the venerable character. Beautiful model, beautiful sculpt in general. Uh, but a lot of stuff to unpack here. Um, now, I caught, like I said in the intro to this video, I caught a lot of flack, a lot of crap for uh, my statement on the background of one of my own characters for my Death Watch was that he was a regular Marine and transformed to a primary, so a lot of people said it couldn't be done. I could have sworn at the time I had read that somewhere that it can be done, and plus, like, why not if you can, if you have the ability, why ever make regular Space Marines again? Um, and not to mention since the beginning of 8th edition, um, I've definitely been on board the group of people that said that this is a, a, a phase out plan. Now, like I said, um, I thought it was more, they were going to go a little bit slower with a, a 10 year plan. Now that still could be the process, could still be the plan. Um, because I just see like the, if you do a 10 year plan, you can just slowly creep things out and people just will slowly accept it over time. Um, five years seemed kind of quick for me. Um, at least in my mind, I thought it seemed quick. But now looking at this, they've released the first like official upgraded Primaris Marine um, character. And what this tells me, because we're well, this is a year and a half right now. We're well, just about. We're almost at November, or I mean, sorry, we're almost at December, which will put us at about a year and a half since 8th, 8th edition has launched. And for them to have an actual upgraded Primaris character now, that's a pretty quick turnaround, honestly. So seeing that now, it could it could very well be this is a five year phase out plan for our regular Marines. Um, I also find it interesting that people want to refuse to believe that because they're all oh, they can't do that. But every edition we've seen before, where they've upgraded the models, they've used um, the box sets of that new edition to release the new models. Every time they upgraded from where we started out in Rogue Trader to where we are now, it was always because of the starter sets that came out. And really, Dark Vengeance is no different. Um, I don't know why people seem to think it is, but um, yeah, I mean, this is the this is the new thing. This is Primaris Marines. Um, and then obviously, hopefully, and I can see because Primaris are very limited in their options, um, we'll start seeing more options come out. Primaris Devastators instead of just Hellblasters. Um, you know, Primaris Assault Marines instead of just your, uh, uh, what are they, the Assault Marines, and, oh, I'm sorry, Primaris Assault Marines instead of just the Inceptors and stuff like that, so, um, or like an Inceptor version of Assault Marines with an Assault variant. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll have to see, but along with this, um, comes a very cool, um, video that we'll take a look at here next. Um, what I like about this is actually, it looks like he'll be a three pack. It'll be him with two uh, um, honor guard. And I love the honor guard sculpts because I love the way their cloaks kind of come around them. They have this really cool shield and sword stance. The only thing I don't like is the two models are mirror images of each other. Like one's a, like an exact opposite, you know, like I said, mirror image. Um, 
which I kind of wish like there's a little bit difference to the poses. Like they're very, I mean, I mean, it's still kind of cool to think that they're kind of in sync, just, you know, left-handed, right-handed versus each other. But, um, I mean, it's still really cool sculpts that I definitely, um, seeing that he'll probably be like a three pack type of deal. Um, I probably will end up picking up this model, um, convert this into something else. Cause this is a pretty, pretty cool looking pose here. Uh, you know, take off these, iconic heavy bolter power fist things that he's got going on and convert it into something else i'm not sure what um but i'll think of something i'm sure and then uh the honor guard definitely looked to be an awesome models to be converted into something cool so um but yeah let's take a look at the um imperium nihilus i'm not sure how to say that uh vigilus defiant Astropathic transmission incoming. Vermilion Alpha clearance. things I want to take a look at again real quick um obviously you know you have the beautiful Marius Calgar model um like I said if I was to use it there's a decent amount of iconography that I'd have to take off like this kind of buckle piece here um obviously I'd have to you know this stuff is easy but this would be a little bit more of a challenge and then I'd have to like pretty much take this off and replace this whole tabard area um, but yeah, very cool model. But something else I wanted to take a look at a little bit closer is this new there you go, Chaos model. Now, I'm curious, like, what I'm actually interested in more than the model itself is this Fallen Primaris Marine. Because I like to add Fallen uh, Primaris, specifically, uh, not just Primaris, but Fallen Marines in general, especially Ultramarines to my tile bases for my far side stuff. Um, with the whole Damocles shores and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I definitely am actually more interested in in this fallen marine here. There's one that came with the uh, Primaris Apothecary that I used uh, quite frequently. I have one on my Farsight model that I actually kit bashed together at Farsight. Um, so I actually like this right here. So I might pick this up and sell this guy because, again, I'm not a big chaos person anyway. Um, definitely a new interesting model. I saw the, I'm not sure if the other Raptors in the video are new or they're older sculpts and the only one is this new character. Um, I'm not too super familiar with Chaos to know that much about these models, if these are new or not. If you know, definitely drop a comment, let me know. Um, but yeah, so that is that and there it is. Where's the other one? They're all around here. Saw him. Saw him. I'm going to take a look at the. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to skip ahead here. His honor guard buddy. Oh, let's play through real quick. Let's see where he's at. Sure. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Where is he at the end? Oh yeah, he's right here at the end. Okay, there we go. There you go. So there is the 
uh, one of the honor guard. Now the other one again, same pose except shield is on this side and sword is on that side. Um, the, the cloak did look a little different on the on the other one. Um, so I mean subtle differences, but pretty much the same. But I really love how the cloak is draped, just straight down, and just very stoic, very ready to go to battle. Like I really like this. Um, so definitely probably gonna use something similar for my star commanders. I even like this here to try to use that with them as well, even though it's very ultramarine-esque. Um, but then trying to figure out what I could do with this shield to kind of change it up a bit for my star commanders. And again, we have ultramarine symbology here and here. This won't be too hard to take off. This will be a little bit of a pain without maybe just replacing this whole thing here. Um, but yeah, we'll have to have to see when it comes, but yeah, definitely awesome. So that is um, the Vigilus Defiant campaign book coming out. As we see uh, doo -doo -doo. here, we have oh, maybe there we go. <laughs> so campaign book coming out for Vigilus. So all right, well let's take a look at what else we've been announcing today. Okay, so to wrap this up, Vigilist Def Defiant takes everything you love about Campaign Book and uses it to bring them to life in the th latest thrilling chapter in the unfolding saga of the Dark Imperium. Take the depth, texture, and detail of the Horse Heresy Campaign Books, add themed armies and narrative battling inspired by classics like Codex Armageddon, throw in an epic story that will cha change the face of the galaxy, and you've got Vigilist Defiant. Calgar won't be retaking Vigilist without a fight. After Orc, Eldari, and the Gene Stiller cults have all but shattered the defense of the planet, the Herald of the New Doom descends. So here's that new, oh, here's a better picture right here, kind of. Here's a new picture of the bad guy coming to 40k, and um, from the Black Legion. So Black Legion have come to Vigilus, led by the Sinister Herald known as Harkin World Claimer. This new campaign of the Dark Gods has declared that the world of Vigilus will fall to the War Master within 80 days. It's not a very long time. <laughs> 80 days is a very short time span. So here's the book, which, interesting enough, looks to be hardback. Which I guess is in line, I'm trying to recall, I think their old campaign books are also hardback as well. So, but that leads right into the Urban Conquest, City Fighting Campaigns of the 41st Millennium. So... We've had similar iterations of this before with different kind of city fighting, um, cities of death, which kind of were their own thing. And then we had kill team and all that. So this is a similar thing to run your uh, urban campaign conquest. So it's very interesting. Um, some of the stuff they um, show in the video, which we'll watch that real quick and then kind of do a breakdown of that. But something with this is there was a rumor mill picture of what a lot of people recognize was Warhammer World, a miniature Warhammer World, kind of like top down, top um, like GPS looking, not topographical, but uh, like a map basically um, with arrows pointing into it, like somebody was planning some court, some kind of invasion. So that could be part of this set. Not sure. It doesn't show it in the video, but there's some other interesting things that it shows. So running campaigns is one of the most rewarding ways to play Warhammer 40,000, and it's about to get easier. Map out your hive city, then conquer it. All right, let's take a look at this video here, and then we'll unbox, unwrap, and talk about this one. Maris Marines, regular part. <laughs> So, 
just some quick things to note that I found interesting, of course. Um, this here, uh, obviously, I'm sure there's going to be regular Marines, but so far, only Primaris Reavers here. Uh, obviously, this is an older you know, model of Stormhawk in Interceptor, but uh, <clears throat> so far, our ground troops are Primaris. Um, then this right here, I found interesting. So I'm not sure what exactly this is, but I do kind of like the idea of a card system versus like the old tile system that they had before like the um there are plastic tiles that you paint like certain you know geographical things and then you set your campaign off of that um which is kind of what a lot of people are thinking since they saw that warhammer world um plastic tile thing that is going to be something similar to that um so we'll have to kind of wait and see but i do like the idea of like this plastic card sleeve thing um, that you can slide the cards into to make your battlefield kind of thing. Either, I don't know, you kind of like pick card to card that you want to go to, or you, you know, fight across this way. I'm not sure, but this, whatever this is, I think it seems like a very interesting concept in general. Um, so, again, we kind of get a look at these cards. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure there's like these numbers on there, so it could be. Uh, certain resources on them. Um, this is, yeah, administrate. What is it? Administratum District 605 or 005 or something. So, yeah, there seems to be different districts or something that you can use to fight. Or maybe as you take them over, you get to get the card for that area and you get certain abilities or something for having that sector, or that section of the city captured, perhaps. Um, yeah, very interesting. Um, and then fast forwarding and again, see a whole lot of Primaris. Not really seeing anything other than Primaris. Um, again, though, we have Interceptor, or I'm sorry, Intercessor, Intercessor, Reaver. Uh, looks like a Intercessor, Reaver, Reaver, Intercessor. So this is probably it's a regular. It's probably an. Inc intercessor sergeant or reaver another reaver so is this a mixed squad or what's going like i want to know what's going on here with this squad like why are they like that is it just because of the looks um there we go there's some devastators but again like okay so there i guess they're stretched out here because like where's the rest of the squad like so we got grav cannon heavy bolter sergeant last cannon and then they're missing somebody but then you got an interceptor or an intercessor sergeant, a bunch of hell blasters going on the way back here, uh, and, and an intercessor again. So very curious, like what's happening here. Uh, then aggressors again, mix of squads here. You got a flamestorm gauntlet, looks like sergeant, and then you have the bolt storm gauntlets with grenade launchers. And then, what, I don't know what we got going on over here. It looks like an intercessor of some kind. So, yeah, I don't know. Very mixy-matchy. Could just be for looks. Oh, here's another intercessor. So, yeah, I don't know. Very, very, very interesting. So, anything else? Oh, yes. This... Right here. So that's another thing. It does look to be a uh, box set coming out, which we'll get to more at the end. But all right, fix <laughs> um, But yeah, so it looks like we have um, some more terrain coming out. So this is uh, looks like one of the statues, kind of on that one uh, administratum, administratum. I don't know how you say it, building. Um, but it's all broken down and you know crashed into some rubble. Um, some new looking ammunition crates with weapons and magazines and stuff. Um, so yeah, so this part here bothered me. I don't know, if, but like here I'll play it again real quick so you can see. But last time I checked, I didn't think last gun shot that way, like a regular conventional rifle type. But this the rate of fire of this too is a bit higher than a regular just rifle. It'd be like more of a you know, 
some sort of automatic weapon. Yeah, so I don't know about that, but uh, but yeah, so then they were just showcasing, you know, fighting within a city. Uh, this building I believe they're on is a Forge World tile of some kind. Um, so yeah, I don't expect to really see that. Another shot of that other battle scene we had already seen, kind of pulled back a little bit more. So yeah, so maybe he's the last one because here's another uh, aggressor sergeant. So I don't know. It's just very all mixed up. But I guess in the reality of battle, you wouldn't necessarily just stay right next to them. Like you would, you'd get a little mixed up. So um, gameplay wise, it doesn't seem so accurate, but in actual real world, if this was real world. Yeah. So then we have this. So this definitely looks to be a box set. So aside from cards, uh, I think we're going to get some terrain, as we saw earlier, and some of those ammunition crates and boxes. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they called them before. They weren't stratagems. They were like, uh, there were certain, I wish I could remember now, but there was a thing that they were called that um, if you got them or controlled them, you... Would get certain um, benefits based on. Um, sorry, these Facebook things keep popping up. I don't know what the deal is. Um, but anyway, you get certain benefits if you control like an ammunition dump or something like that. So it'll be interesting to see what all that has in store. So, but then there's what? There's like a good picture right here where it seems to zoom out so we get kind of an idea yeah it was pretty quick but it's definitely a box so we'll have to see what all comes in that very interested in that so all right still more to unpack so let's check it out all right so the new this new campaign system designed to make modular map based campaigns fun to play and simple to run allowing you to build your very own urban battle maps then fight for supremacy and interlinked battles with your friends, you won't just be battling to defeat your opponents, but also to capture strategic resources and manage your overall strategy. So that's kind of with those, like I said, those ammunition crates and stuff like that. There, there were certain ones. I can't. I wish I could remember what they were called, what they called them before. But basically, if you controlled like an ammunition point, like the unit that was within three inches of that or whatever, got to reroll ones or or whatever else. So I could see definitely similar things like that. Man, I wish I could build a table like that right now. That is just the amount of money that I see right here, but it looks so awesome. <laughs> There's also, I'm going to click on this real quick. Some broken statues here that look pretty interesting. Like, they seem to be similar to these. Um, which obviously these are easy enough they come in the set, but I wonder if there's gonna be like a more broken down statue coming So urban conquest is perfect for gaming groups and clubs looking to add an extra dimension to the battles Keep an eye out for more news on what that set means for you in the new year All right, so got a lot more coming Okay, so Sinister Uprising is next up. Chaos Space Marines aren't the only threat lurking on Vigilus. The time for a new uprising for those who dwell below is nigh. So before we get too far, let's take a look at the video they released. Within these holy shadows, hear them in our dream. We are guided by our great father. Others call, and we will. This world will burn. The heavens will deliver our reward. All right, well, there you have it. Really short and sweet, but the Gene Sealer cults are coming, and they're coming with motorcycles. <laughs> Um, something I thought was pretty sweet about that is I love, I mean, the bikes look awesome. They're pretty sweet. And they got some better pictures here coming up, but, um, this model right here, I, I don't know. I just love that model. I think it looks sweet. Like a little dirt bike, very 
kind of Mad Max, a post-apocalyptic world looking. Um, yeah, it just looks sweet. Just motorcycle, sniper rifle, takes the shot, carries on. <laughs> um, I like that a lot. It looks really sweet. So, um, yeah, so let's get back to the article and take a better look at what's going to happen. So gene seal culture coming, and it looks like they've been busy scout, scour, uh, scourging, scavenging, and repurposing the works of the Imperium for their own nefarious purposes. And don't worry, we haven't forgotten about your Kotex. You're next. So yeah, so bikes here. We can get very interesting, very cool. Um, but my favorite model out of this is this one right here. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with that eye. It looks a little cross-eyed. <laughs> uh, but I just like this sniper rifle and the bike and everything. Um, definitely worth converting into something. I'm not sure what yet. I don't have gene circles. I don't play them, but I definitely want to convert this into something. So, uh, Wrath and Rapture. Um, so, we weren't kidding when we said we've got a lot to reveal today. Wrath and Rapture has already set the internet aflame. And, and that was just the friends, fiends of... Uh, Slanesh. Having shown off models a few weeks ago, the Blood and Glory studio preview, we finally can take a look at some of the most exciting miniatures from the set, the new Herald of Slanesh and Karnak. So, we'll quick watch this right here on just a small screen. I'm not... Need to see So again, another thing coming out in December. So if your wallet isn't already screaming from all these new releases of things, here's one more thing that you could potentially have. <laughs> um, but yeah, Age of Sigmar, I'm sure these models can also be used in certain circumstances in 40K for the demon armies. But anyway, so we're particularly excited about the re-imaging re of Korn's most faithful hunting hound. Look out, wizards, Karnak's back. Um, and then we have the Warbringer, War, Warhound, Reaver, Warlord. These are all names that mean something special to Warhammer fans. The iconic god machines that most of us, on some level, would love to own one day. Titans are the most eye-catching, impressive models in Warhammer 40,000. Seeing one in person is an inspiring experience, which is why we're incredibly excited to announce that a new full-size Titan is marching to war. Meet the Warbringer. So another giant... Uh, model uh, War Titan now I saw somebody had made a comment in another group which I thought was pretty funny but um, of like all the things for Forge World to be releasing they're releasing another model that's gonna you know that's worth a car payment you know or even worth a, a small car depending upon you know your budget so um, yeah I have to agree it's very very interesting it's cool you know, another Titan but I mean I don't I guess they must make enough money out of them. I guess I don't. I don't know. I just don't see the the value of that. But then at the same time, I know a lot of people don't see the value of constantly releasing primaries lieutenants. But they're pretty awesome, so why not? So I think that's kind of the same thing here. <laughs> um, so um, the Warbringer Nemesis Titan is a new class of god machine armed with an artillery piece capable of transforming your chosen grid coordinates into white hot crater. This massive engine of destruction has been designed to look right at home alongside his brethren. It is our most detailed yet, with a crude upper deck featuring a spotter, a loader, and a massive revolver-style loading mechanism for the main gun. Um, so yeah, interesting. I don't know if you, yeah, you can kind of see their little deck platforms up here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of kind of <laughs> funny, kind of cool. For sure. All right, the Warbringer will be available soon. Subscribe to uh, Forge World Newsletter, and we'll email you when you can buy your own. 
Next one, big one, big, 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 chapter approved 2018. Finally, fans of the, at the opening day have had a chance to find out more about chapter approved 2018 for themselves, as well as talking to the team behind the essential guides for gamers. For those of you not at the open day, here are some tidbits we've learned. It'll let you customize your characters more than ever before. So when I had brought up my other one, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if you'll be able to customize it as much as that particular model that I had shown for that uh, Soul Survivor event, because that, I mean, that was a bit of an extreme customization, but um, still would be pretty awesome if you can do something like that. But we'll uh, we'll have to kind of wait, I guess, to see or get more information on that. Um, but either way, sounds pretty cool because at the very least, we can now customize and make our own lieutenants. <laughs> so if you haven't gotten enough lieutenants, you can now customize and potentially make your own rules and characters uh, for your own lieutenants for your your <laughs> your armies. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works, but I still like the idea. I think that's funny. It would be cool if uh, we see in Chapter Approved some sort of like Primaris Command Squad where you can just take like a full 10-man squad of lieutenants that re-roll the re-rolls of the re-rolls or something. I don't know. But that would be kind of a funny uh, troll that GW could do against the community, which I think would be hilarious. But anyway. Um... But chapter, few, chapter Approved 2018 features a new character creation system open for open play where you can build your very own legendary heroes. If you're feeling creative, this year's edition is going to be a great or is going to be great for you. And your units. One of the takeaways from the narrative play section from Battle Honors, a system that lets your units level up and develop new skills throughout the campaign. So they have a um, battle honor system. So it sounds like they're kind of taking a lot of stuff from like how you upgrade your guys from kill team and how those squads of people can be, you know, upgraded with skills and, and stuff like that. They're kind of doing something like that for a narrative play for various squads. Like as they defeat different units and defeat enemies, they can basically earn battle honors, which then, you know, you can then used to upgrade them, which is also kind of a cool from a modeling and hobby standpoint too. Like as your guys earn these battle honors, you can model them or paint on the different things under their banners or their armor to symbolize those battle honors that they achieved, which is kind of cool. And then it also sounds like it's good news for the Grey Knights. Uh, match play fans have been scrutinizing the new points from the book, and it's clear at this point that one massive winner is the Grey Knights, who have have been uh, who have seen sweeping points reductions across a swath of the units. So it looks like Grey Knights are getting a big point reduction. Um, we'll see how this plays out, but definitely looking to see more Grey Knights potentially on the field as they are getting to be cheaper. And then we have the Adeptus Serratus are back. So this, um, of course, is their their um, I don't know what you call it, their trial beta. I guess their their beta version of their codex before they release the real deal. Um, yeah, so taking a look at that, um, of course, Codex of Adeptus Serratus is one of the most exciting things about Chapter Approved this year, and we've had a chance to get an even better look at the rule. We'll be previewing these in depth soon, but in the meantime, here's another awesome stratagem to tide you over. Holy Trinity, one command point. Adeptus uh, Serratus stratagem with Bolter, Flamer, and Melta is the Foe Purge. Use this strategy before shooting with an Adeptus Serratus unit in the shooting phase. If the target, if the unit targets all of its attacks, the same target, and that target is within range of at least one model in the unit firing a bolt weapon, one other model firing a flamer, and one other model firing a metal, add one to the wound rolls made for firing unit until the end of that phase. For the purpose of this strategy, a bolt weapon is any weapon profile whose name includes the word bolt, i.g. bolt gun. A flamer weapon is any word that says flamer and a hand flamer. A melted is inferno pistols. Includes inferno pistols and a weapon profile whose name includes the word melta. More news soon. Excited by these reveals. we got a couple more up our sleeve later today, so keep checking back. Um, so, I also saw in a Serratus group that um, they didn't see the purpose of this. They said that I don't really see ever using this stratagem, um, which I think 
at first, like anybody can say that about really anything um, until it comes to the situation. Because I, I can see a situation where you're going to want that extra plus for that melta. Because the flamer, and it, yeah, it's kind of, but if you have a melta in with that squad and you're looking to get that extra that extra hit so you can make sure you, you get that shot through. Um, I could see the benefit of that, of that, especially too, if you have like a multi melt um, sister and it's a heavy weapon and they moved. And so you're getting a minus one because of the movement. So now you're back up to your ballistic skill with, with this. So, um, I mean, it's not super game breaking, game changing by any means. And it's probably also why it's only one command point. Um, I'm sure the juicier stuff is yet to be revealed, but so this was just something to kind of appease people um, to get them by. So, all right, well, that's all this right here. Let's do a quick uh, up to the top, and I'm going to hit the refresh and see if they've updated anything else real quick before we move on. Um, and if not, then stand by for, no, looks like everything's still the same. So, um, yeah, so um, definitely, uh, Oh, Spirit of the Emperor, nice. Definitely a book I want to get because it uh, showcases the uh, Emperor's Spears. So, um, but yeah, so definitely uh, keep an eye out. Um, as I'll probably be putting a part two up a little bit later today as they continue to release more news on things coming. And, yeah, um, so I don't know. What are you excited for? What are you happy to see? Um, the biggest thing for me definitely um, is this here because it confirms the primaries can be upgraded and his honor guard guys look pretty sweet and I can't wait to convert him. Plus he's an awesome base model to convert into something as well. Uh, so definitely looking forward to all that. Um, this is kind of a cool thing from this model I would say. Uh, of course the campaign system looks cool. I can't wait to see more about what Urban Conquest is. Uh, definitely love this model from the Gene Stealer Cults. And yeah, that's about all we got. And then of course we got the chapter approved. So um, very excited about the idea of customizing characters and just the hobby and aspect and everything that it'll bring. So, all right, well, th hey all, back real quick. So something I wanted to bring up that I completely forgot about during the whole recap because there's so much to unpack. So I just wanted to throw it here, throw it here at the end. Um, so the implications of what it means for Calgar becoming a Primaris Marine are huge. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking just in general since the introduction of the Primaris Marines that there's a potential for a, another a civil war breaking out between Primaris and others. Um, but I think that this doesn't change that possibility, but it adds a whole other dynamic because one of the you know oldest and most respected um, Space Marines has undergone the process of becoming a Primaris now. We, we see a couple things, which I think is like a given because Ultramarines will always get on board whatever Daddy Gilliman says, right? So um, the fact that he underwent the process now and then the Ultramarines will probably be more accepting of the Primaris but what does that mean for other chapters and other successor chapters who at this point have shown kind of a pushback against it still because the Nova Marines, I know in the new Dark Imperium books, um, have shown that there's a kind of a pushback and disconnect between them, the regular and then the new Primaris Marines. Um, so this still could bode that there's going to be a civil war, but could it mean like the like an inner Ultramarines civil war potentially? Um you could see other chapters getting involved in it, but I could see just like a, almost an inner uh, Ultimar system civil war between successor chapters and the Ultramarines. Um, but of course this could flow over into other chapters and you could start seeing regular Marines breaking away um, and separating themselves from the Primaris Marines. And I don't know, there's a lot that could be, that this could bring. So it could either be that they're showing that um, be, once since he has taken a, under, undergone the Primaris transformation that other Marines might see it as more acceptable now 
and it just sweeps the whole Imperium that, you know what, this is okay, let's accept our new Primaris Brothers, and you know what, why not, why don't I get upgraded too? Um, or this could shake the boat a little bit more. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I find that all like super interesting. So, um, yeah. So again, let me know what your thoughts, comments are. Drop them below. Check out the Facebook page, the rest of the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, share, and until next time.